The Santee and the others have taken the wagons. Come on. Get some more men and meet me at the horses. Come on. Across the Cumberland Though he had no wife and children That he could call his own They were all his children To lead safe to their new home The winter time was coming There was not enough to share Boonesboro would go hungry And no one seemed to care He worked and lived by all the rules He paid the asking price Nothing's gonna stop him now, not guns or loaded dice. Some men care so much for money, they would starve your friends and family. But a man with a dream can find the way, follow him and you will be free. Stop it. We can't keep running these horses with a load of freight like this. He'll get here. I'd bet on it. Some of us are just born to stay alive, and Dan's one of them. What about you, Jim? I'm just plain lucky. Look what I got. Is that all you want? What else is there? You pick a partner and you gamble, you're gonna win big. Like back there when Doyle wanted me to take Boone. It was an easy play. He handled me all the cards, but I gambled on Dan. Because he's your friend. No, because I like to win against the odds. But you could have been killed. That was the bet I made. We don't get moving. You're pushing us, mister. That's what you're getting paid for. Maybe it ain't enough. You made a bargain, mister. Now there's a stand of trees up there, circle the wagons and wait. And fight? Well, I figure with a Cherokee on our side, we got them outnumbered. Well, it's it among my people that one Cherokee is worth 10 white men. Of course, that's only a legend. Move them out. All right, let's go. Come on, do 
I'll say this, Dan. Doyle's gonna want those goods pretty bad to storm this place. Well, I hope he wants them bad enough to try. With those wagons loaded with food, he isn't gonna starve us out. Well, he may not get in, but he can keep us boxed in unless he gets reckless. And I've got a feeling he's running out of patience. You know, Dan, you'd make a great card sharp. I didn't figure on anything but driving your freight. Now just stay hidden. You see anything unfriendly, shoot. That away. Reading bonded woman. If you can get courage from reading books, you must have read a heap of them. Mr. Byrne, I'm sorry if I was sharp before. It's the Irish temper, I suppose. You must think I'm some sort of leprechaun. Way I can tamp powder and, and shoot and and ride up on that wagon like a piece of kindling. But it may surprise you to learn I'm still a woman. knows he's got my potter. If we put them wagons to the no, torch... No, 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 to see my goods go up in smoke. We can wait them out till night. I want Boone now. Now we'll cover you from here. Get going! Get off. Ah.
myself cut up if we stay here. Right now, your rifle will be more useful in your strategy. My heart out is a teamster, not a rifleman. Boxed in. He's fixing to burn us out. That's the next thing he's doing. I can't see Doyle doing that. He's not going to burn anything he figures he can keep. What if we told him that we were going to do it? He'd have to let us go. I'm like Doyle. I'm not going to burn anything I figure I can keep. Boone! I want to make a deal. I want to send a man in. Send him down. You trust him. No, but I got an idea what he's going to ask for. You buying that? Maybe. All right, now you got it straight? I got it only. Only what? Well, what if he don't go for it? He's got to go for it. He could hold me, Cash. For what? To bargain with. <laughs> now, what did he figure I'd give up to get you back? You're real likable, Cash. Go on. What's his bargain? He let the grub go through in exchange for the powder wagon. Why? Because that powder means a lot more money to him. How does Doyle know he can trust me? Because that powder wagon's going to stay right where it is. How about it, Boone? It's the only chance you got. I reckon you're right. You can tell Doyle he's got a deal. But I'm going to stay here until the wagons go through. You're playing a real smart, Boone. Unhook the team from the powder wagon, break open one of the kegs, and the rest of you get ready to move out. Make sure your supplies get through. Yeah, I figured he would. <laughs> You'll do anything to protect those precious supplies, won't you? We've got people in Kentucky waiting for us. Baby. Are they waiting for you to die for them, too? Well, now, I'm not planning on that, but they are counting on me. Well, if it means dying and all this bloodshed, maybe it isn't worth it. Well, maybe you better ask the people in the settlement. Settlement. I hope I never see it. Aren't you going to stop him? Why? Doyle will kill him. That or, uh, or apologize for thinking it. You're supposed to be his friend. You may not think me much of a friend if I try to stop him. I'm staying with you. Somebody's got to take these wagons through the gap. We'll catch up. Thanks. Roll them, Dutch. Check the wagon, see if they got any of my powder. 
It's all right. Get them out of here, and you just better keep going. Ha! Ha! Move them out, Santee. Ha! Ha! kill you, Santee. You ought to, but you won't. You want that powder too bad, Gash? There is no powder. All right, get him out of here. If that last wagon clears, I'm gonna light this torch. Take him out. Ha! Now, don't anybody make any wrong moves, or Boone will blow us back to Clint's station. Carter's here, all right. Drop the torch, Boone, and move out. Not until we're out of your rifle range. as they can get. They're dead. Let them go, Santee. You're right, Dan. There's no point in killing one we have to. Only... Only sometimes I forget to remember that. isn't right. Hmm? What isn't? An Indian driving a team of horses. Now, from everything I've read... But that's the advantage of an Oxford education. <laughs> <laughs> I still, sometimes my Indian blood tells me I should be stalking game and fighting the Shawnee. On the other hand, my English upbringing frowns on these savage practices. I'm a confusion to myself. <laughs> What about you, Rebecca? I'm a bonded woman. You're a woman in love. It's easy to see. 
Wagon master in this outfit? Well, I reckon you could say so. Mister, you don't know how glad we are to see you. We were beginning to think Doyle could never get those supplies through to us. Another week, that pass might be closed until spring. The people down in 96 are going to be mighty relieved. 96? We ain't heading for any 96. You mean that food don't belong to us? Well, I'm afraid not. We're taking this over the mountains west to another settlement. What happened to the things we ordered then? Doyle promised to deliver it in two weeks. Maybe we better go and have a talk with him. It's going to be a mighty long distance talk, mister. Doyle's dead. Who's doing the supplying at Clinch Station? Well, nobody that I know of now. How are we going to last out the winter? We need those supplies real bad. I don't know. We've got just enough supplies to last us till spring. What are we supposed to do? Well, maybe you ought to close up your fort and plan to winter someplace else. Not a chance, mister. Not the way the war is starting to take shape. We aim to keep 96 well garrisoned. Well, I reckon you aim to spend a mighty hungry winter. Move them out. Wait a minute, mister. I'll tell you what I'll do. We're packing 50,000 in gold. It's all yours in exchange for those wagons. 50,000 in gold? That's what we said, mister. That's an awful lot of money, Dan. Not if you don't want to sell. You sure you won't change your mind? We need those supplies real bad. Well, we need it just as bad as you do. Move them up. Well, there's no sense staying here and wasting our time. Let's go. Did it ever occur to you those two might go home and get some help? They could cause a lot of trouble, Dan. Well, by the time they go to 96 and back, we'll be through the gap. I don't think they'll bother us. All right, let's go. talk to you for just a moment? Sure. I didn't mean to eavesdrop, but I couldn't help overhearing your conversation today with those two men. That's all right. Wasn't intended to be private. Oh, that's not what I meant. Well, then you're going to have to tell me. Well, from what I gathered, they wanted to buy some supplies from you. That's right. And you refused to sell. That's right, too. They have people that are starving, or that will starve before the winter's over. Well, that's what they said. Don't you think you might have shared your supplies with them? Nope. I must have misjudged you, Mr. Boone. You're a most inconsistent man. I don't know what you mean by that, but if it means that I'm not going to share these supplies, then you're right. I'm disappointed in you, Mr. Boone. Good night. Uh, I think there's something that you don't understand. You see, I spent a whole year all by myself over behind those mountains, starting that settlement you're talking about. And those people, 
took my word for it that they were better off there than where they were. And so they sold their farms and everything they owned just to make this trip. They made it on, on my word, which makes them my responsibility. And I don't aim to see them suffer for it. Maybe those other men feel the same way. Well, then let them take care of their own the way I'm doing. Mr. Boone, in the books I've read, it says the wilderness is full of game. Now, I should think... Those friendly Shawnees you were reading about? Well, they don't take kindly to people taking game from their private hunting grounds. I read another book, Mr. Boone. I'm sure you did. It's quite an old book and quite well respected. There's a phrase in it that says, Thou shalt cast thy bread upon the water. And I shall see it return in many days. I've done a little reading in that book myself, ma'am. But I figure we haven't got many days. So now if you'll excuse me. What are you trying to do? Steal my girl? Nope. She was just telling me that we ought to share these supplies with that Tory settlement down by the Saluda River. Now, now that's real interesting. Not to me, Jim. There's a spare wheel in Dutch's wagon. Bad luck. Maybe not. Could be Dan might change his mind. About getting these supplies to Gantuck? Oh, not likely. Maybe he needs persuading. I can't see Dan Boone giving up because of a broken wheel. I admire him, too. And it ain't a matter of giving up. It's just knowing you haven't got the cards. Three of you ought to be able to lift it. Jim, give me a hand with this wheel. All right, right there. Let's go. Higher. Go on purpose. Well, we thought you had the wheel on. Hold it, Boone. We don't like the way you've been running this outfit. We decided we'd take over. Two of you get on that tongue and lift that wagon. You get that new wheel on. Seems I have a lot to thank you for. I'll see that put that wheel on. Dan? He's hurt rather badly. Help me get him into the wagon. Wait. Mingo isn't going to die of thirst. Oh, Jim, I, I think it's best we said goodnight. I'm looking forward to the time when that won't be necessary. Good night, Jim. It might be sooner than you think. Good night, Peggy. Rebecca. 
Mingo. Mm -hmm. You're from beyond those mountains. What's it really like? Well, that depends a good deal on what you're looking for. The books I've read say it's it's a wilderness filled with danger and hardship. The dark and bloody ground. <laughs> Some people call it that. Among my people, it's called Kentate. <laughs> Kentate? Promised land. Land that was promised by the great spirit to his people. The Bible speaks of such a land and such a promise. That must be how Daniel feels about it. I should think so. He's chosen it to be his home. I've often wondered how it felt to have a home. I think you may find out sooner than you think, Rebecca. After you've crossed the mountains. Good night, Rebecca. Good night, Mingo. How's Mingo? Well, he's feeling better. Or at least he says he is. I figure he'd say that if he was on the point of dying. He, uh, he told me about Kentucky. It sounds beautiful. Seems I heard you say you were hoping you'd never see it. Did I, Mr. Boone? Good night, Mr. Bunn. Seems like everything I say to that girl turns out wrong. Or too right. I guess I just don't understand women. The secret is, don't let them understand you. Well, our friends are acting real quiet. Yeah. They're probably trying to figure out how to get back those guns you took away from them. I wouldn't trust them very far. Not out of my sight. No use both of us losing sleep over it. Why don't you get some rest? I'll keep an eye on them. Thanks. I'll spell you in a couple hours. Uh, Dan. I haven't forgotten I owe you my life. Well, you've made it up to me twice over. Once with Doyle and yesterday with the drivers. I wanted to hear you say that. So it makes us even, doesn't it? Well, that's one way of reckoning. Uh, Dan, Doyle's dead. And there's no one around to take over his trading post at Clinch Station. Are you saying I'm keeping you from going back there and taking over? I keep thinking of that 50,000 in gold. That's a lifetime's winnings. We're camped at the fork of the road. All we have to do is turn south instead of going west toward the gap. We're still heading west, Jim. Dan. Dan, do you know what it is to be a gambler? To try to wet down that ball of fire in your belly when you're sitting on a chance? Even when you know the odds are against you? Even when you're betting your life? You'll have to tell me about it someday. Good night, Jim. a friendly little talk. Oh, what about? The left fork of this road leads down to 96, don't it? Yeah, it sure does. There's some mighty big mountains to the west. Yeah, they're gonna get bigger. So it seemed to us it'd be easier if we turned south. Better road, too. It depends on how you look at it. We're still going west. Would oh, Jim stop them? Please stop them. Put it down. Leave him alone. He's had enough. I thought we were all in on it. We are. 
Only I'm dealing. Now get those wagons moving. Well, I say, let's finish them right here. You heard me. What about the Indian? We'll be going through Cherokee country. He'll come in mighty handy. Besides, he's hurt. What harm can he do? The girl ain't. Don't any of you go near that girl. You got that? Get all those wagons. Get his rifle, too. Like I said, Dan, I'm a gambler. So long. Get in that wagon, Becky. I'm not going. You better do as he says. Mango's gonna need some looking after. Judd was right. You should let him finish me off. It hurts when you've been beaten, but you know the pain will end. It hurts when men betray you, but it's worse when it's a friend. Santee's got Rebecca. And he's got the wagon train And he's left you with your broken dreams And a body racked with pain Till today, I never knew Jim Santee. Mm, the moon moves slowly, Rebecca, but it sheds its light on the forest. How could I have made such a mistake? Especially with someone so good, so close by, and you couldn't see it. Daniel. Bingo, he doesn't even know my name. Sometimes a man who can trust himself to sing pretends to be dumb. I may never even see him again. You'll see him again, Rebecca. He's out there somewhere, following these wagons. How can he, Mingo? He's on foot and, and hurt the way he is. He's out there, and they know it. You can smell their fear. What's the matter, Judd? Ain't you hungry? No, I ain't hungry. I still say we should have pushed on instead of stopping here. You're worried about Boone, aren't you, Judd? He'll be lucky to stay alive. Then why did Jim go looking for him? She's right. Where is Santee? <laughs> Don't get so jumpy, Judd. Here he comes now. Dutch. Any sign of Boone? What makes you think I was looking? You should have let me kill him when I had the chance. Like I said, Judd, I'm still dealing. Don't bother taking off that saddle, Dutch. Where do you think you're going? After Boone. After Boone? Are you crazy? Santee just came back from looking for him. I don't trust Santee. I'm not forgetting he pulled me off a boon. He let him go free once. Why not again? I'm aiming to make sure. You'd better watch yourself. Boone's tough in a fight. He won't be very tough without a gun. What do you want me to tell Santee? Don't tell him anything. I don't figure I'll be gone too long. I'm, uh, I'm sorry you had to see that this morning. I didn't enjoy it. 
You were planning it all along. Becky, that gold, it'll all be ours. We can buy your freedom, anything. My freedom with you? I'd sooner stay bonded. We'll be at 96 tomorrow and gone by night. You'll see things different. Only you're not going to make it, Mr. Santee. You're a gambler. You should know when your luck is turned. You the medicine man that says so? He's following these wagons, Mr. Santee. And you can feel it the same as I do. Just thinking, we can't be more than 10 or 12 miles from 96. And that moon's plenty bright for driving. Hitch him up. You mean you want to go on in tonight? The sooner we get there, the sooner we get paid. Dutch, you and Judd get the horses. We'll pack the camp. You real sure you want to travel tonight? You heard me. Now get those wagons hitched. Well, the trouble is, Judd ain't here. What do you mean he isn't here? Where is he? He went back looking for Boone. And you let him go? <clears throat> now get those horses and let's get out of here. It's a little late for that, Jim. Stay away from those rifles. You can only get one of us, Dan. So put the gun down and we'll let you go. I'll get one of you now and the other two of you can come looking for me in the dark. You won't shoot anybody, Dan. Remember, we still have that girl and your Indian friend. I don't think you'll hurt the girl, Jim. Maybe I won't. The Big John and Dutch may not be that particular. I'll take a chance on that. Now throw those rifles away and throw them far. Better do what he says, Dutch. Booner, I swear I'll kill the girl. All right, Boone, I warned you. You left me no choice, Dan. I'm coming after you.
this was one deck I couldn't stack. Like I told you, Dan, these guns, they do a real good job. Up cl close. Uh -huh. She makes a fine teamster. Thank you. Oh, it's, oh, it's so good to see you. Welcome to Boonesboro, ma'am. Say it. Even if you swoon away dead, say it. Say what? My name. Your name? My name. Rebecca? Louder. Rebecca! It's a land of milk and honey. If your love is true, you will see. And the man with a dream can find the way, follow him, and you will be free. Daniel Bloom was a man, yes, a big man, with an eye like an eagle and as tall as a mountain was he. Daniel Bloom was a man, yes, a big man. He was brave, he was fearless, and as tough as a mighty oak tree. From the coonskin cap on the top of old Dan to the heel of his rawhide shoe. The riffinest, roarinest, fightinest man the frontier ever knew. Daniel Bloom was a man, yes a big man. With an eye like an eagle and as tall as a mountain was. 